but I um well I watched the highlights I've not watched any Grand Prix like for ages and it was kind of weird because a lot of the names I'm unfamiliar with but as I was watching it so this is a Las Vegas Grand Prix and as I was watching it I was thinking do you know what this is actually evolved because it, it got a bit of a hard rap for a while the Grand Prix and I feel like it's actually really quite exciting now because what what's happened is is you've got the new breed so Verstappen, Norris, these kinds of people who Russell. are taking, yeah yeah who are taking up the top of the pack but then it's also really interesting down the middle of the pack because it always just used to be you know Alonso, Bottas, Hamilton at the front and then you never yeah. really knew what was going on yeah, at the back and yeah, you didn't yeah. care. Yeah, yeah. But whereas now you've got this new breed who are at the front and scrambling, then you've got the OGs who are sort of middle to the mm. back and they're scrambling mm. and they often come to the front as well mm. and there's this real exciting kind of like um there's excitement more or less all well, the way I, through the pack which I, is cool. I uh, I I've always been into F1, yeah. always loved Great it, sport. always watched it as a kid. Uh, watched it probably into my late teens, early twenties, and then I I would say, like late mid late twenties, just not yeah. interested at all. Why? Like I don't know. I think it just uh, like that was there an element of like Hamilton. Remember Hamilton and Mercedes have won well with Nico Rosberg. They have they won eight titles in a row. Yeah, Hamilton seven. Nico, I'm pretty sure Nico Rosberg won. Right, um, and then you know it's just is it is it a bit samey? But also I just think the coverage um, wasn't very good, and I think what's really propelled it recently is that Drive to Survive just series. Just about to say the and, same and thing. And also brilliant, be, obviously because they sold like Bernie Eccleston sold it to Liberty Media. Right, and they have. Like before then, there was no real social media presence. There was no, you know, it was quite literally on TV. Yeah. And that was it. Mm, mm. Whereas I actually very rarely watch the full race. Yeah. But I love consuming all of the content. That, yeah. Like I, I like watching Drive to Survive. Yeah. I like watching uh, all the content around it, the build up. You know, it's much easier to consume it just to watch a ten minute qualifying session on YouTube as opposed to tuning into three hours yeah. of qualifying. So uh, yeah. I'd say that's why it's got a little bit more popular. But yeah. also, I think you're right. There's this new breed of drivers coming through. Totally, and it makes it really exciting. I, I can remember the days, because it's a bit of a nostalgic one, because it was um, like, as a family, we were never really into the football or into the rugby or anything like that. It was always the Grand Prix mm. that Dad was into. And in those days, you've got to think... It was terrestrial TV. It was races from around the world. So he'd be staying up to watch the races at like 2 a.m. and stuff like that. So there's a real nice nostalgic part to it. But I, I think the way that I... Because he would be able to sit down and watch the whole Grand Prix. Whereas for me, I'm just as happy to consume the off-the-track politics, the mechanical side of things that's distributed through social media mm, that you can mm. just pull from anywhere and then get the highlights of the race mm. and do it in that way yeah um and it was it was wicked to it was wicked to watch it again this week actually and see some of the you know it's such a stark contrast from the last time that I watched it, it must be maybe 5 years ago or something like that and just things like you know like the tech it so it was the Las Vegas Grand Prix it's obviously a, a street race new race a new race new, for, new this race the first year first of, it, year of is the it race right? yeah, yeah 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 and it was cool to see just things like the the the, um, the crash barrier tech. So Lando Norris had a crash. I forget how many laps in it was, um, but it was you know uh, you know a flip out at high I speed. I know. saw the crash. Yeah, I didn't quite. I didn't see what I saw. It almost just was it a malfunction no, or it was just, it just, just like a, just because he was he was just going down a straight one. He he came round a corner and just. Just something happened. Bit, I don't know. Got a little bit um, squirrely. But they do. They do the. Uh, they do the, um, like the cockpit view, and you're just like, oh my god! Like, I mean, it, it's absolutely solid, and the driver doesn't look like he's in any danger whatsoever. Mm, but can you imagine mm. going? This is the cool thing about those people, and I think that, um, I think that 
uh, you know, F1 drivers, despite, you know, being in a machine the whole time, are some of, if not the fittest of all of the athletes. Oh, mate, have you seen some of the diameters of their necks? No. Like, just, well, think about the G-forces yeah, that they have yeah, to... Yeah, 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 that's interesting, kind of, actually. Yeah, mate, and... You know, when, when they come back last minute, you, you know, like when, if a driver crashes or like Ricardo broke his hand yeah. and then somebody, uh, that young American lad, I think it is, came to take his place, he, you know, his neck won't be up to speed. Right. It was the same with the hash driver. Um, oh, I forget his name, but he, he came back last minute. Right. And, you know, he said it took it takes him a couple of races to get That's your mad, neck. isn't it? I know. Yeah. I know, crazy. And there's no real way have to you, train you've seen for them that? doing... Yeah, they do. They have the... They have, like... It's like some kind of bondage setup. It's just like a, a strap around the head, and they're just kind of pulling the the tower. Oh, I see. Stack. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have see, I have seen people in the gym doing that, where they sort of hang over the edge of a bench, and they have a strap, and they kind of, like, lift their head up <laughs> like that. I think it's important <laughs> for... Um, it's important for jiu-jitsu. There was a guy, there was a fight that um, our friend Will sent me a few weeks ago. I think it was Cyborg. And he's just, I mean, he's, there's no difference between where his ears start and his shoulders, mm, you know, mm. and it's like, look at the Just going back to the Las Vegas Grand Prix, I thought it was a, obviously it was a new race. And I thought there was quite a lot of controversy around it, though. Um did you see that Carlos Sainz hit a manhole cover on the first lap? On the like, basically oh. the first eight minutes of practice, right. and and that that put a little bit of controversy on it. And How people and people right? kind people kind of slaying it. But what I would say is, you have to remember that that with it, they've built that track within a year. Right. So that only got announced last year. Crazy. And they've built a track they yeah. built the infrastructure uh, uh you know like the pit stops and stuff and um you know there was there's been quite a lot of controversy around it quite a bit of negativity i know that like they had to cut they had to kind of close half of las vegas mm. and they've i mean one th i think it's a brilliant achievement that they've put that track in place they've put the show on but it it did appear that formula one you know the, the and liberty media were a little bit greedy with it all you know i i read that they they'd put shuttering up so that you couldn't see the race from anywhere unless you bought a ticket basically oh so like any public space that could see the track got shuttered up which is nuts which is just it's just like come on it's if it's a city race you know Yes, sell your tickets, put your grandstands up, but people are going to watch it. And I just felt like that was a little bit of a greedy, greedy side to it that I didn't really like. It's a shame, and I, isn't I know it? they've got to make their money and mate, they're making um, money. And hopefully they are making money, mate. But there is a lot of talk that it, you know, it isn't as pro like F one teams aren't like it's only the top teams that are profitable that makes sense so yeah. you know although they spend millions probably billions of pounds they I, it's got to be profitable and then i i think the other my other big takeaway from it was max verstappen i will hold my hand up and say i'm not a max verstappen van, fan mm -hmm. particularly um he's just he's just a bit miserable yeah. i just think he's a bit miserable um and you know, he's been saying all week that the Grand Prix is one percent sporting event, like, and and ninety nine percent. I can't remember the words he used, but like ninety nine percent um, a show. Right. And I just, I just think as the the driver that is winning the champ has won the championship yeah. this year. You know, show some solidarity, show some support that in in the in f1 yeah yes it's not going to be one of the best tr drivers tracks that on the circuit mm. you know it's not going to be silverstone but you know put your support behind it because maybe these tracks that earn more income and more 
kind of eyes on the sport mm, mm. are good for the sport generally it's a difficult one because i agree with you and i think that they should be better representatives but there's also a this school of thought is the which lost is man podcast these people where we embrace yeah. the challenges and triumphs of being a modern man in the middle years join us as we explore the rugged path of growing older wiser and bolder in a world that's constantly changing i'm your host john and i'm matt and together we'll navigate this uncharted territory with grit, humour and a whole lot of heart.